Okay, bye. The right cue sets off a chain reaction of signals that trigger a growing sensation of hunger. Hunger takes hold of George's body. His stomach starts to squeeze what's left of breakfast out of the way to make space for lunch. Sandwiches! Sandwiches! Are you good? Hi, George. Hi. We've got salami and brie, we've got avocado giabatta, and those lovely muffins that you like. No, thanks. Just plain tuna for me today. As soon as George looks at his food, his brain starts to calculate how filling it's likely to be. It wants more than just a meal. It wants a satisfying meal. The walls of his stomach contain stretch receptors which estimate the volume of food coming in confirming the meagerness of this meal. George has failed to satisfy his hunger. His body faces an unprecedented situation. He hasn't eaten enough to keep him going. George needs extra fuel. But it's not his fat stores his body turns to. Inside his liver, another kind of fuel is stored. Emergency short-term reserves of glucose. Glucose molecules are energy boosters. They are released fast and quickly burnt in mitochondria. But they only produce half the energy of fat. George's body would normally refill glucose stores after every meal. But George has eaten so little in the past four days that his glucose stores are running out. I think you've got it all wrong about this girl. Come and play basketball. That's the way to lose weight. No thanks. You give me a donut and a cup of coffee, I'll show you how to dunk. Using up these stores will have a deceptive effect on his weight loss. When glucose is stored, large amounts of water are locked up with it. As the glucose is released, so is that water. George is urinating an extra two pints a day, and that's a lot of weight. In only four days, George has lost seven pounds. <laughs> yes! But almost all of it is glucose and water. George may think his diet is going well. Hi, this is Lorraine. Please leave a message after the tone. Hi, Lorraine. It's me. But his George. body fat Look, stores are still intact. Look, I've got a lot of work to do for the next couple of weeks, but maybe we could get together a chew of, I don't know, dance a cha-cha. His Look, glucose stores, on the other hand, have Bye. almost run dry. And when they do, the battle with his body will really begin. I think we'll get more advantage from a positive attitude, so let's not think of it in terms of a hostile oh, takeover. Yes, the photograph of the lady. George has managed to resist his hunger drives for a week. Get some wine, George. No, I've banished anything fattening from my life. I mean, do you know how many calories are in those things? Thanks. Please do start. I think Pearson Sons are doomed. Look, say you're the cheese and Pearson Sons are the guy. His glucose stores are at an all time low. To his body, this can mean only one thing. Famine. 
there's no choice but to surrender the precious fat reserves back into the bloodstream. But there's a price to pay. George's fat cells send a warning signal to his brain, which drives his hunger to new extremes. All thoughts are overwhelmed by the aching desire for food. Are you going to eat that or just play with it all day? George's hunger drives are interfering with his ability to concentrate on the simplest of tasks. Do you mind if we do this tomorrow? Fine, we'll do it today. I don't know why, but Lorraine Harper speaks very highly of you. Do you know Lorraine? Through Henry. Henry? Henry Pierce? Her boyfriend? These are bad times for George's body. His fat stores are being drained, and they need to last as long as possible. You look terrible. How much have you lost? Everything. His body imposes a drastic energy cut. The mitochondria inside his cells start to burn less and less fuel. George is slowing down. You're becoming a very sad man, my friend. Why are you beating yourself up about this? She doesn't like fat men. Correction, she doesn't like one particular fat man. Oh, you're wrong. That girl wants the thinner me, the inner me, the man within. The man that's thin. George may be shedding fat, but when it comes to shedding the pounds, he's in for a shock. Fat is much lighter than glucose in water, so he's hardly lost any more weight. To lose seven pounds of fat would take George another month. Yes! George's willpower breaks. He can no longer hold back his hunger drives. Hello, yeah, I'd like to order a pizza. The super deluxe, please. Extra cheese and extra pepperoni. No, in fact, double pepperoni. Oh, do you still do the second one half price? Mm, I'd have one of those as well. Every mouthful brings George pure pleasure, a reward for answering his body's cry for energy. Like most diets, George's full frontal assault on his fat stores has failed. What's it say? It's over. But there is another way to lose fat. Get your stuff. We've gone to the gym. You talking to me? When it comes to losing weight, there's no such thing as a free lunch.
After years of neglect, George's muscles aren't prepared for what's about to happen. The blood supply to his muscle fibers has withered with disuse, so very little fat can be delivered to them. Inside every muscle cell are emergency fast-burning glucose stores. But these are just a short-term fix. As energy demands soar, George's muscles need to generate 50 times more energy than normal. His mitochondria haven't a hope. The task is simply overwhelming. George may feel like a sudden bout of exercise has done him more harm than good. Where's the remote? Search me. I would if I could catch you. But as he rests, an astounding metamorphosis begins. Now, we're gonna look at the joint. Throughout George's muscle fiber, new blood vessels are growing increasing supplies of energy-rich fat. And deep within the muscle cells, his mitochondria start to divide, doubling the energy they can generate. Advise you not to rile me. Stranger himself. Exercise is transforming George's body to burn more fat. And as his fuel demands rise, his fat stores release their supplies. Oh, oh, you forgot how it went. An elephant never forgets, Keith. <laughs> but because George isn't starving himself, this release of fat does not shock his body into thinking famine has arrived. <laughs> and his hunger drives are kept at bay. It's a virtuous circle. The more George works out, the more efficient his muscles get. And the more fat they burn, the more energy he has. After eight weeks of vigorous exercise, they have become fat-burning machines. More fat is being delivered, and there are now many more mitochondria to burn it. George Fraser for Lorraine Harper. George, hi. Lorraine sends her apologies. She's asked me to look after you while she's away. Henry, Henry Pierce. I told you you were wrong about her. You know the new me can do much better than Lorraine. See, you haven't lost any fat from around your ego. <laughs> Come on. George's fat stores aren't just shrinking. They're moving to where they are most needed. To ensure a constant supply of instant energy, muscle cells have begun to stockpile their own mini reserves of fat. I tell you what, Henry seems a nice guy. A bit quiet. Could do with losing a bit of weight. Maybe you could help him. <laughs> These changes to George's body aren't permanent. As quickly as they have come, they can go. Nice one, Samson. Fat is always just a few mouthfuls away. 